Quick disclaimer, though I am fairly sarcastic through the entirety of this video and my life, this is a video of me doing an actual repair, so if you're here for the normal lighthearted shenanigans that usually goes on here, you may want to pass this video by because it is quite long. I do apologize for that. Now that you've been warned, let's get into it. A couple of weeks ago, as I was on my way to work, my beautiful 1997 Dodge Ram lost second gear. And instead of doing the right thing and letting it die, I've decided to prolong the agony and patch it together one more time. Now, on a 47 or 48 RE, when you lose second gear, more than likely, you either broke the second gear band or spit the friction lining right off of it. This is a uh, heavier, or the heavy second gear band. This cavity right here goes forward. You can purchase these for, oh, $20, but uh, I decided to nab one from a transmission rebuild for zero, and according to my math, zero is less than $20. But I'd recommend grabbing a, uh, a new one. It is possible to replace the band with the transmission in the truck, which is what I'm going to do because I'm lazy. But you cannot slip it in with this ear standing this tall. I have seen where people have taken a rag, put it in the vise, and put the band in here, grabbed a cheater pipe, and then just drove this thing home to crush this ear down. Even with the rag, you're still going to damage the friction material, which is the whole point of putting a new band in, is to have friction material. And also, you have the opportunity of, notice how this is rounded, of crushing this flat which would be helpful if we were going around a flat or square drum, but we're actually going around a circular drum. I would think if you're going to do the old crushy crushy method, you would use instead a press. And even if you don't have a press, I'm sure you know somebody that you can buddy buddy your way into their press. But if you are going to go the crush method and use a press, I'd recommend, I don't know, still using a rag, but maybe finding something round to press against, like, like that maybe. Just maybe don't use something that has enough power to go through two cinder block walls and take out King Kong on the other side. Whatever, you do you. I don't like the crushing method because you're going to end up, you're gonna end up hurting something. And also, where the anchor goes, I like to put it on the anchor side, by the way. Um, you're gonna make, you're gonna pinch this up where the anchor might wedge in there. So, what's the other option? Get yourself a marker, mark just above where the anchor rides. It is shorter, but there's not enough of a lip there to keep the anchor from popping out if it gets out of adjustment. So, the next step is to weld these two pieces back together, which I have cut out so I can get a weld down in there. You also don't want to put too much heat into this piece right here, or else you will damage the friction material, which is we're trying to save. So it's a good idea to have, oh, have yourself a squirt bottle of water that apparently already has the squirt bottle thing missing um, and do a little bit of weld and then quench it. Now that we have this welded back together, we're going to drag some weld back out this way to create a, a lip so that the anchor can't pop out. I will be the first to admit this is not very pretty because we were just doing a bunch of tack welds so we didn't put too much heat into it and so that we um, <clears throat> could build the weld out. Now we are covering the anchor. Now it is built back up so we do need to grind that smooth.
So this is the side we cut off. I don't know if you can see it if I'm too close. But we had it pretty well cut off till about right there. We welded this up and then we drug weld out oh, a quarter of an inch. And hopefully that gives us a nice flat ear there so we can slip this side up around the drum. The factory ear stands about a half inch taller, taller, and the side I cut down and welded back up measures 7 16 of an inch tall total, and that fit in nicely. Now on a 48RE, it's a little bit tighter, so you might have to grind just a little bit more off. Alrighty, time to put her up on the lift. Now before you start this project, it's a good idea to put the transmission into park and then turn the rear drive shaft until it click until park clicks in. That way you know that this right here, this nub, will go past the park paw because the park paw is in the notch in the tail uh, tail shaft of the transmission. So when we go when we pull it out and when we go to go back in with it, the park paw, we're not going to be fighting the park paw because it can click into the keyhole in the Tail, uh, tail shaft. Now this is the point where you go to the kitchen and get yourself a nice pan before your wife or your mother or in my case your wife and mother find out and you pull the plug. Now I like aluminum deep pans with drain plugs because they have drain plugs but you can also get yourself a drain plug and a nut and drill a hole and weld your nut fast to your existing stamp steel pan and voila you got yourself a drain plug you don't have to worry about pouring transmission fluid all over yourself and if you drink weld if you weld like most people you won't have to worry about pulling your drain plug to drain the transmission fluid You are going to have to pull the kick down and shift linkage off of the left hand side of the transmission and unplug the electrical plug right behind that. Um, I'm probably not going to get too deep into the removal and installation of the valve body because if you need help with that you probably shouldn't be doing this project in the first place. Come out of there you bugger! Yeah, just as I suspected. Right there. Unless you want it to be broken, it's not supposed to look like that. Turn the adjuster back. We can get it apart. Pull the band strut out. Eh. Or, or not. Now we're probably going to have to cut what's left of this band off to get it out. Which wasn't much. And then you just fish it out like so. To fish the new band in, we can either feed a wire up around it and grab a hold of the new band and pull it up around or you can just kind of fish it around with some screwdrivers and uh, and swearing. If this is a transmission you're planning on running a while it'd be a good idea to smooth that up with some memory cloth or something but because of who I am as a person I'm just gonna put this together because it's mine. Now that went pretty easy. I guess all you gotta do is put the strut back in. Make sure it's in the tab right. And then we can put I'm hiding stuff for myself again. We can put the anchor back in. If you can 
can see that or not. Hey, now is a great time to get the bands adjusted properly with the valve body out of the way and with the kick down linkage and shift linkage out of the way you can get at that adjuster right there there's a whole lot more room for activities to adjust the bands you can either grab yourself a 5 16 allen key <clears throat> and adjust the kick down band or second gear band whatever you want to call it to where you can put a 5 16 allen key or square um, stock or whatever you got underneath between here right there 5 16 and you can also adjust the low reverse band the same way lay the lower lay the key here and then see if you got 5 16 of an inch of movement or the other way is to tighten the low reverse adjuster once you break the nut loose turn it into a snug of eh tight and then back it off three turns and that'll give you the same adjustment on the kick down band you take and adjust that one down to the same torque of about eh and then you turn the adjuster back out one and a half turns and that'll give you five sixteenths of an inch of travel. You might say, well, why don't we go tighter? Tighter's always better. You know, more's always better. Well, if more was better, then why don't we just tighten the adjuster down and leave it there? Well, in that case, then looser must be better. Well, I have a perfectly loose band that I just pulled out if looser is better, why did we bother replacing the band? No, the proper adjustment is 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 the best. That's that's the best adjustment. Leave it alone, put it like that, everything will be grand. Now that we have the new used band slid into place, you just do the exact opposite of what you did to get to this point. Get back in there, you bugger. Now it does take some jimmy in to get that dog gun park rod where it needs to be once you get it it isn't so bad after that you gotta stick this bad boy in there stay in there So this is the kick down band, or second gear band, whatever you want to call it. It's actually the kick down band. But you can see it's torn. And this is the one that's found in most of them. So you want to get that heavier one I showed you, but you don't want to get that ultra super duty heavy one that you can't even flex. Those don't work right either. And you won't be able to fish it in. Why I didn't replace this with the good one when I rebuilt the transmission? Well. I guess I wanted to slide a new one in in 13 years or so. As always, it's an excellent idea to accidentally overfill the transmission with fluid and then get distracted while using your homemade fluid extractor so you suck too much out and end up having to repeat the process back and forth several times. Okay, time to see if we fixed it. That was second gear. I don't have to drive it like a power glide anymore. <laughs> <laughs>